Programming the Maxima Complete to your transmitter frequencies is very simple. First, activate your caller. Turn on the receiver and press the mode button. The leftmost programmable digit will flash near the top of the display. Simply use the up, down, and enter buttons to complete the programming process. Let's try an example. If your receiver is a 1005 with 217 as the base frequency and you want to program in a 217-325 transmitter, start by pressing the mode button. Make changes to the blinking digit so that the frequency that you want to place in memory is seen at the bottom of the display. Since your receiver can only pick up frequencies in the 217 band, you only have to program the last three digits. The first number to the right of the decimal is the first number that can be programmed, so hit the up button until you reach the number 3 and press enter. The next digit to the right will begin flashing and press the up buttons until you get to 2 and press enter again, then program the 5. The final digit here will default to 0, but it can be used to fine tune if your caller drifts off frequency. Note that the flashing digit can be moved left by pressing the mode key and to the right by pressing the enter key. Now when you press enter again, we move to the memory storage step. The maxima complete always shows the lowest free memory location. If you accept this location, press enter again and the process is complete. If you want to put the frequency in another memory slot, use the up or down arrows to locate the memory location you want to store the frequency. Now the 217-325 frequency has been stored in memory location 2. You can save a new frequency over one that is already stored and you can erase frequencies. To erase, select the frequency, press the mode key and hit the down arrow until you see four flashing dashes in the top part of the display. When you press the enter key, the frequency is erased from memory. Special to the Maxima Complete is the ability to fine-tune the frequency. To begin, turn down the gain until you see one or two bars on the display. Hold the Enter button down for one second. Then, use the up and down arrows to find the strongest signal or best sound. Press and hold Enter again to complete fine-tuning. You must complete the fine-tuning process before you can move on to operating the receiver. Quickly pressing the enter button on Tracker's Maxima Complete will activate the attenuator or near mode. The near mode is useful when seeking to locate a dog that is less than a half mile from the receiver. The near button makes it easier to set the gain level by reducing the sensitivity. When the display is showing high, the receiver is set for tracking long distances. Low mode is for when your signal is very strong or you are close to the caller. One of the most common tracking problems is back signal. This occurs when you are getting a strong signal in two opposite directions. For example, the transmitter is located in front of me, but I can still receive a strong signal in this direction. Back signal can be managed by one, reducing the gain, and two, take readings from several locations. Now that I've reduced the gain, I can only hear the signal in the true direction. In difficult situations, you may have to reduce the gain until you barely hear it. You should be able to determine the true direction with some practice. The signal will be strongest when the orientation of the receiver antenna matches the orientation of the transmitter antenna. For example, if the transmitter antenna is perpendicular to the ground, the signal strength detected by the receiver will be greatest when the antennas are positioned vertically versus horizontally. One of the most important considerations of a tracking system is range, or how far away you can hear the transmitter with the receiver. 
The primary contributor to range is the strength of the transmitter. The second most important consideration is the size of the antenna. Tracker's convenient fold-out antennas are perfect for 95% of tracking situations. But a more powerful multi-element directional antenna can be used to get the initial bearing of a distant transmitter. Contact Tracker or Tracker Dealer for more information on Tracker antenna solutions. With experience, you should be able to judge relative distance to your transmitter by looking at the gain setting on the receiver. Use the number at the top of the display on the Maxima and the relative location of the wheel on the Classic to determine the gain level. Distance estimation is best when you have a line of sight signal. As you are using your receiver to recover a dog or another object, make note of the gain setting used at various locations and reconstruct the distance after you find the transmitter. You should be able to estimate distances with some practice. When talking on your cell phone, have you ever experienced trouble hearing the other person in one spot, but heard them loud and clear after moving a few feet away? The same thing can occur when tracking. This is one reason why it's often easier to track on the move rather than standing still. It is best to form a theory of which direction the transmitter is located and don't let one reading make you abruptly change directions. Stay on the heading until you get irrefutable evidence that you are off course. Before embarking on a cross-country search for a transmitter, you may want to take readings from several locations. This is called triangulation. You may want to use a map to note the bearing, particularly in an unfamiliar area. Select three to five listening points that are a reasonable distance from each other. If possible, select locations with higher altitudes where obstructions are at a minimum. Travel to each point and identify the bearing to the transmitter. Identify the area of overlap. This is your most likely location where you'll find the transmitter. Now you should be able to choose the best starting point to quickly locate the transmitter. Power lines, particularly transmission lines, can cause a lot of confusion. Often the signal seems strongest when the receiver is pointed directly at the power lines. To determine which side of the power lines the transmitter is situated can be difficult. The best strategy is to walk to the power lines and with your back to them, set the gain on the receiver by only sweeping away from the power lines. Then without changing the gain setting, move to the opposite side and do it again. After a few attempts, you should be able to tell which side of the power lines the transmitter is located. It is much easier to track a transmitter when you can see its location. This is called line of sight, and the bearing from the receiver is consistent. When the transmitter is hidden from view by a hill or building, you often receive an indirect signal called a bounce signal. When this occurs, there are several strategies to find the transmitter. First, try to get as high as possible on a ridge or top of a building. Elevation is your friend when seeking a line of sight signal. Second, use process of elimination. Because line of sight is always the strongest signal, eliminate areas that you know the transmitter cannot be. Don't forget these five items for successful tracking. Set the gain at the lowest level where you can hear the transmitter. Adjust the gain and then sweep, but don't do both at the same time. Move while tracking and use the sound to get the bearing to the transmitter. Where possible, establish line of sight. And practice, practice, practice. These five skills will help you overcome most tracking challenges. With experience, anyone can become a good tracker. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Happy tracking.